what Isaiah 58 is saying, we need to see people through Christ's eyes and stop seeing financially rich and poor and start seeing everybody spiritually poor, everybody spiritually bankrupt. Jesus came to those who are oppressed. The word Jesus uses here speaks not of someone in jail or prison, it's used for someone that's imprisoned by life. When you see those rioters, they're imprisoned by their lives and they're imprisoned by their sins. And so are all of us, all the way up the spectrum. And the gospel is the only thing that liberates. And we're supposed to have the liberated life and go tell them how we got liberated. It's people overwhelmed by the pains of life, by abusive relationships, someone overwhelmed by illness or financial woes or all the other endless struggles of life. They are overwhelmed, they are afflicted, they are joyless, they are hopeless, and they're empty. And Jesus said, I came to those who know it that will acknowledge their bankruptcy, their hopelessness, their lostness. And if they will confess that, he said, I will save them. Jesus left us to share the gospel of salvation. He left us to point people to Jesus, who said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, those of you that are oppressed by life, and, and you can't go on. And, and you, you are pondering, ending your life like, like a higher and higher percentage of young people across this globe are doing. Because life has no hope, no possibility. They'll never dig themselves out of the ditch they're in. God wants us to focus on why it is we're here. We're supposed to be living redemptively. We're ambassadors of reconciliation. We say, your real problem is not finances. Your real problem is not that you didn't have a, an Ivy League education. Your real problem is not that you don't have a Silicon Valley job. Your real problem is that you have a void and emptiness and a, a horrific godlessness in your life. And that's why you're trying to become something you weren't created to be. And that's why you're destroying your mind and your body and amusing yourselves to nirvana. But I'd like to introduce you to the one whose arms are open like mine are to you. And I will point you and share with you how he changed me. Because I was equally as desperately evil. That's another thing we do. We think those homosexuals, they're really bad. My pride and arrogant and kind of gluttonous life is not as bad as theirs. Mm -hmm. That's how we think. We're addicted to other things. One of the things Messiah does is come to the person who's overwhelmed and oppressed. And what is that oppression? It's sin. It's sin. It's the burden of sin. The wearying burden of sin, the weight of the law, and unable to keep God's righteous standard. God will come, the Messiah will come, and he will take the whole burden of their sin, the whole burden of trying to keep the law, and give you rest. That's what we tell people. You don't even realize what's, what's driving you. You are, you are under the law of sin and death, and it's crushing you. And, and I was a similar crushed person, and I found the escape route. He comes to poor prisoners, blind and oppressed by sin. He takes them and makes them spiritually rich. Spiritually rich, that's why this gospel, even in Kalamazoo, that God wants you to be rich and healthy, is not from God. God never said that. I don't want you rich and I want you healthy. I'd like you poor and sickly if you'll serve me and have my attention on me. God says, I want your attention. Paul said, today is the day of salvation. It's time for the poor prisoners, blind and oppressed, to come to Messiah and be forgiven and receive salvation. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has come to rescue us forever from our spiritual poverty, our spiritual prison, our spiritual blindness, and our spiritual oppression. And he's come to give us riches and freedom and sight and deliverance. And he wants us to do his ministry of telling others how he did that for us so that we can take them with us to heaven. So how do you minister to a society in its death throes? You live out the gospel by letting Jesus Christ set us free, open our eyes, and enrich us with his gracious presence and spend the rest of our life undistracted by everything the rest of the world is canoeing toward materialism and self-centeredness. And we go 
upstream looking at anybody that will listen to us and we share the gospel and say, follow me as I'm following Christ.